In 1872, my great-great-grandparents were among the first permanent pioneers to make their home on the serene coastline of Palm Beach County. With the rise of several prominent hotels, businesses, and Henry Flagler's Florida East Coast Railroad, the area found itself in need of greater health care solutions for its growing population. As a new community on the map, the people of West Palm Beach first entrusted their care to a nursing quarters located in a five-room cottage. And 100 years later, that same trust lies in the hearts of each person to shape, share, and experience in the story that is Good Samaritan Medical Center. The hospital was built in 1920. It's the second oldest hospital in all of South Florida. The reason the hospital started was that the community needed a place for their care. And so as people started coming down here to Florida and spend their winters here, they wanted an option. And so actually the Palm Beach Island helped open up this hospital. In the 1950s, we admitted around 6,000 patients per year, and today it's over 10,000. And the reason for that is the community's grown, the number of patients here and the services we have have grown, but it's also a big change in the fact that if you look 50 years ago, patients would come to the hospital and stay for a long time. The procedures were more complex and that's just how care was delivered. Today, we have patients that come in and they get discharged home in the same day for a lot of procedures. And we look at where's the best location for the patient to be taken care of. And as much as that is home, we support that as well. I believe I was the first board certified oncologist in Palm Beach County. I kind of feel like I was in the very beginning of oncology. Certainly here at the hospital, they were doing some oncology, but in the early 90s, I believe it was, or mid 90s, we uh, formed a, uh, a cancer center, and it was based here at Good Samaritan back in, uh, I believe it was 94 or 95. It's kind of grown since uh, to the stage it's at right now, which is very involved. It's one of the more involved, if not the most involved, especially here at the hospital. Uh, when I first came here, we had no computer system. Everything was manual. We hand wrote every single requisition for each test that needed to be done. Uh, everything was manually filed, alphabetized, you know. So first you get to put them in a vertical file, and then I got to put them in the drawer, again alphabetically. <laughs> this is a very unique hospital. You can just look at from the location. It's a waterfront location. It brings in the old charm of Palm Beach County. Before my boys were born, you know, my family, everybody who was aging and had illnesses, we all came here. Good Samaritan was the premier hospital here. At my age, now walking into the hospital and really just having a sense of place uh, and the hospital's part of that, uh, no different than the schools we went to and uh, places of worship. It's part of the infrastructure of the community. Good Samaritan's been in my life for over 48 years. Just a baby when I came. <laughs> I was actually um, the summer before my senior year and the director lived next door to me and offered me the job. So little did I know that was gonna change my life forever because I ultimately married the director's son <laughs> so the director of the lab's grandbaby was born here i got a 21 day stay here once that we looked at the water from the executive suite and the staff was phenomenal and the, the care was amazing and lo and behold i wound up marrying one of the nurses that helped set up the concierge floor many patients in this community you'll just walk through have been born at good sam so connections to good sam uh, start obviously uh, being born here. My youngest daughter was born here. My mom was born here. I was born here. Cousins, aunts, uncles. Our children were born here. Not to say all the close friends and folks in the community. So I feel happy and very proud to be a part of Good Samaritan Medical Center's uh, history. We always felt this is home. The culture that's been developed here, um, you feel when you walk through the hallways, it's different than other hospitals you go to. It feels like a family. People are smiling. They support each other. And it's not just the employees, it's also the medical staff. 
very collegial medical staff that is here to support and do what's best for the hospital. How I ensure that my patients have the best experiences is first I get to know them. Once you get to know someone, then you're able to connect with them on a, you know, on a level that they can understand you and you can understand them. And I believe once we've achieved that, then the care comes easy. The quality of the hospital really is dependent on the quality of the physicians. The group of physicians here is finer than any group I've ever worked with anywhere. And the view isn't bad. <laughs> What makes it different here is not only is the, the nurses, the PCTs, the OT, the PT, everyone here works together as a team, but what also makes it different is that you have the doctors backing you up. Like I can easily call my doctor and say, hey, something's going wrong with my patient. And immediately they come over and you know assess that patient with me to make sure that we get the best outcome for that person. Like most physicians here, having trained at major, large institutions and teaching centers, you don't really capture that family, community hospital feel that you can achieve at Good Sam. When you walk into this hospital, you can actually feel the difference. The big atrium, the big corridors, very neat and clean, very cordial staff, and very good uh, team A who works day and night in this hospital to keep it going. There are certain traditions at the hospital uh, one of the things that's unique is we have our own daycare. So you don't have hospitals that have their own daycare you know, everywhere. So it's important for our physicians, we'll have their, um, their children there and also our, our employees. But what's fun about having your own daycare is that you have certain times of the year where you can include them. Every single Halloween, we've got the kids dressed up and touring around doing the trick-or-treating with their costumes. Uh, the administrative team, of course, and the employees also have a costume contest. But it's the kids that really make it fun. Medicine is a part of our family. I come from a family of doctors. It's almost, if we aggregate, take all the family members, we probably over 100 years of medicine in our family. My dad is a doctor. My brother is a doctor. His wife is a doctor. My wife is a physician assistant. She's in medicine. My uncles and aunts are doctors and OBGYN. I happen to be the only cardiologist in the family. I see my daughters. They are also interested in medicine. They have accompanied many times with me in my cardiac procedures and they have come with me even in the middle of the night to see what I do in an emergency setting. So for us, medicine is just a part of life and we are passionate about it. As my dad previously stated, I've accompanied him in many uh, different surgical procedures that he's uh, had to perform on patients. And when I become older, I want to pursue a career in medicine and hopefully I get the opportunity to work here. Most about medicine is helping people and also learning about different diseases and new uh, technologies that can help the healthcare system. So it's important to look back and celebrate the 100 years because it is unique and we've changed over time and we've been here and we've been supporting the community and we want to celebrate that and celebrate the movement we've made in the past. And as we look forward, it's fun to say, what is healthcare going to look like with all the changes that are coming? What do we need to do to position ourselves? What are the services that we need to move and change and adopt to be able to meet the needs? Our whole goal as a community hospital is to be here for this community like we've been for 100 years. We are expanding uh, locally. We recently opened a freestanding emergency department with which we call the OCED, Off-Campus Emergency Department, and we're able to capture uh, more of the community and provide emergency care services. So not only is our name spreading um, outside of a particular diameter, but patients are realizing that we're able to deliver quality, capable services beyond just our building here. Um, what I could see in the future is where is artificial intelligence going to go and how is that going to change the way that we do deliver care? Um, is it going to drive decision making? You know, what are the changes there? Um, when we look at robotic surgery, it's fun to think about how is surgery going to be done? Is it going to always be a surgeon that's in the same room with the patient? Or is there going to be care that's offered across county lines, nation lines, internationally? Um, because the data and the technology is adapting so quickly. As we pause to reflect on all that we've seen and the lives that we've touched, we remember that each moment carries meaning, memories, and history as we build towards tomorrow. And that is why this is our promise to you, our promise for progress, to shape moments, days, 
years, decades, and centuries because we have been here, we are here, and we will always be here for you. So I think my favorite memory every day is just, you know, knowing that I touched somebody's life and did the best I could do. And when you go home at the end of the day, you may be bone tired, but you know that you helped and you took care of, you know, somebody that needed you.